Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bar habati fillah A question was asked Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh كيف نثبت أن الفرق مثل داعش والشباب أنهما من الخوارج أكثر من الناس الذي يتأثرون بأفكارهم يقولون تثبت لنا أن فرقتنا الخوارج ويدندنون هذه الشبه So the question was asked after giving salam wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, that the groups of Daesh, meaning ISIS or ISIL or whatever name you want to refer to them as, and a Shabab, a Shabab is the group in Somalia, uh, that many of the youth, and especially the youth from them, most of the youth from amongst them, say, uh, and, and that are affected by their ideology, they say, prove to us that our group is from the Khawarij. And they uh, make arguments around this and bring these kind of doubts. And of course, every group, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, Kulu Hizbi Maladehim Farahun, every group rejoices with what's, what they have. Every group, every sect. And especially you find this from Hizb Shaitan, from the the parties of the devil or the party of the devil. And we already know the Prophet said, If Tarakatil Yahuda la eta was a bain firka, if Tarakatil Nasara let Natain was a bain firka, was a tough Tarik who had the Umala Thalatha was a bain firka, Kula have in Nara la wide, Kula men here Yarasulullah, Kala men can Allah met you, Makan Ali, he was Habi. The Prophet said, the Jews were breaking the 71 sects, my, uh, the Christians 72 sects, my Ummah and the 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Meaning, which one is this saved group? And this is why they're called the saved sect, because they are saved from the hellfire. Afirkata Najia. This is why the ulama, they would say, the saved sect. Who are they, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, those who are upon what I'm upon and my companions. So when you look at Al-Shabaab and when you look at Daesh, when you look at how they kill all of mankind, meaning they kill the believers and the disbelievers, and mostly they kill believers, mostly if you look statistically, that who they kill and maim, and the lands that they inhabit and destroy are the Muslim lands. And you see mainly that they attack and kill civilians. For example, Al-Shabaab went to, uh, I don't know the name of the uh, university, I think it starts with a G, uh, or the region is G or something, in Kenya. They went across the border from southern Somalia, and they killed the people in the university. Okay, they shot up the university campus. Um, you know, they go on buses, they kill the people. If you're Muslim, they say, are you Muslim or not? And then they just kill people, students, whoever. It doesn't matter to them. They have a new methodology, a methodology which is in tune, in line with the Khawarij. They make takfir of all the believers, anyone who doesn't agree with them. So not only do they say the governments are not ruling by the Sharia, they go on to then, therefore, say that then, then they're a legitimate target to continually rebel and continue to keep instability. Somalia has been in war, been through a tragic civil war for probably 21 years, something like this, since I believe 91, I believe it was, or 90, the early 90s. And since that time, you had... Various groups, uh, Al Ittihad, uh, the Sharia courts, uh, I forgot what they, uh, uh, and then later they manifested into Al Shabab. And what Shabab and the Islamic courts, when you look at their ideology and the way they turned, and so many, they try one another as spies and they kill them 
you know, through suspicion. These are organizations that are built upon suspicion. These are organizations that are only united upon warfare, blood, and killing. These are organizations that have women strapping bombs on themselves and blowing up government buildings and anyone who's in there, the, cler the clerk to the cleric, to, from the uh, minister to the person mopping the floor. They kill. That's what they do. Uh, that's what they focus their Tao on. Their Tao is based on slaughter. Their Tao is based on paying fighters to join them and recruiting them through extreme ideologies that are only in common with the Huarids. And there's so many details. This is not the place to get into all the details. And I've talked about it for the past couple of years. You can go back and look at the countless videos we talked about this. Let me give you an example of Daesh. So amongst their groups, and Al-Qaeda fits onto this as well, you know, there's subway, subway bombings like they did in the UK, like they've done in many European countries, beach killings. I, I just don't understand what kind of jihad this is. I, I, I just haven't read it in the books. We read these kind of things only, we only understand this mainly from the contemporary Khwarij because the, even the original Khwarij had more integrity than these people. These people will dress as a woman in order to sneak into a compound and blow themselves up. This is what they did in Khobar here in Saudi Arabia. These people will do anything. They will dress as women. They will shave their beards. They will do anything that requires total disobedience to a law drink alcohol the night before they do suicide bombings. They do pretty much anything and everything in order to achieve their means. They believe the means justifies the ends, which goes against Sharia. This goes against Islamic law. So they violate Islamic law. Let's look at some of the examples. Every time there was an attack in, uh, in America, in the, around the world in the, few, in the past few years, uh, uh, Daesh would claim uh responsibility so they can for them it was about credibility okay so you have some that are legitimate attacks and the people have shown to be the 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 information that we have is those people had either pred pledged allegiance or whatever the case may be and they did things like going to nightclubs and shoot people you know and other than that, go to their workplace, kill people. This, you know, this kind of insanity has nothing to do with Islam. And they will try to compile as many fatawa. And fatawa is not how you build your religion. You build your religion on usul. What do we understand from the book of the law and how it was practiced by Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how the salaf al how they practiced. Did they go around doing these kind of actions and make the whole world was just black and white. And in fact, does today's scenario in many of these countries apply to what it did 1400 years ago or 1200 years ago or 1100 years ago or 600 years ago in the time of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah? There's so many factors that uh, are involved here. Moving aside from that, we see that these people are willing to do criminal activity in order to achieve their means, like sell drugs, like the Taliban is well documented, and many other tekfiri groups or groups, you know, that are rebellious tekfiri groups, that they rebel, they spend all their time, these countries need to heal Afghanistan, the people are tired. But no, nope, Taliban still have to go to a military hospital, suicide bomb, kill 115 people. Oh, they still have to go to this charity uh, and, and say that they're uh, uh, people who are, uh, uh, you know, that are giving dawah. So let's, they, they kill him. You know, this is, this mentality of slaughter, this is the mentality of the Khwarij. Let me give you a dalil from the, uh, from the Salaf. Ibn Umar, or Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'an. I believe it was Umar or Ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'an huma. He said about the Khawarij, the original Khawarij, and, and I want you to look at this to, and, and put this on, put the actions you see of Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, I, ISIS, ISIL, Daesh, all these other Tekfiri groups and extremist uh, groups, Al-Qaeda and others, and all their offshoots and those who preceded them, Put them on the scale of this and look at well, their menhaj and their methodology of just maintaining instability on the earth. You've seen it in the That's what they do. They fit perfectly into that ayat. 
in those ayat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like in Surah Al-Baqarah, of saying, No, we're the ones rectifying. They say they're the ones rectifying by making takfir, by recruiting the youth, by distorting Islam, by trying to wage uh, war between civilizations, by trying to cause fitna and fawdha, by trying to destroy the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah, by making takfir of the ulama. They say they're the Muslihun. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about them? He says about the munafiqun and those, he says, rather they are the mufsidun. They are the mufsidun. Those are the ones who spread wickedness. They don't make islah. They spread wickedness. And they, tell me what good Natija has al-Shabaab achieved from their rebellion for how many years and their control of territory? Are people safe? and feeling comfortable? Has Somalia healed? The potential that's there, the economic potential, has it bore fruits? Or is it that these people maintain stability and they feed off that? What about Boko Haram and their recruiting uh, of the youth, kidnapping girls, uh, and all the, the other madness, and then some of them they brainwash to go into souks, fish markets, and do suicide bombings? What natija is that? What godly objective is that? What divine objective? How does those how do those actions compare with I've not created mankind a jinn with the purpose of worshiping me? What kind of worship have they spread? But rather they spread the worship of the devil. That's what we see. The worship of Shaitan, you know, new forms of uh new categorizations in the deen of bid'ah and, and uh, the spreading of blood. Getting back to the point, the, the, the athar of Umar, I believe it was, radiallahu ta'ala, he said about the khawarij, yaktuluna ahla uthan, wa yat, uh, yaktuluna ahla iman, wa yatrukuna ahla uthan. That perfectly, if we go to the numbers, now I can go to the numbers. We can go to look at what, what's happened, the numbers approximately, because this Syria is a conflict zone. We can look at what's going on in Syria. You know, these things are well documented. We can look at probably what ISIS and Al-Qaeda have done in Yemen. We can do, we can look at what uh, Afghanistan, we can look at some of these st statistics and we'll see that they fall under this. Yaktuluna ahla iman wa yaturkuna ahla ufan. In general, you see this menhaj, that they kill the believers and they leave off the uh, polytheists. You'll see that in as far as the overall numbers and even non-Muslim policy uh, pundits and observers, they document this well as well. They observe this, but the Muslim lands, we, we already, they feel the scars in Saudi Arabia. They felt it. How many suicide bombings, how many killings at checkpoints from these wicked groups? How many police officers, newly recruited officers, getting their paycheck in Yemen and Aden and places like this were killed by Al-Qaeda suicide bombers? It's well documented. How many Somali troops have been killed and others? And these are all Muslim lands and Muslim blood being spilled. So that should have sufficed us alone. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.